the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this August 26, 2013 edition. Tonight, is Syria deja vu all over again? He's invoking the dead children. It's really hard to express in words. Look at the, the dead human suffering. Just like the baby incubators. Us. And the Defense Department says the founding fathers were extremists that wouldn't be welcome in today's military. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Claim that an attack of this staggering scale could be contrived or fabricated ah. needs to check their conscience. Oh. And welcome back. Top story headline. McCain urges very serious U.S. action on Syria. McCain, who has long argued for military aid of the Syrian opposition to tip the balance in the conflict, said he was skeptical that the U.N. team would be able to complete a thorough probe. Horrific. Horrific. And if the United States stands by and doesn't take very serious action, not just launching some cruise missiles, then again, our credibility in the world is diminished even more if there's any left. And I dare say it's because of guys like John McCain who hang out with Syrian Al-Qaeda rebels on their summer vacation that we have diminished credibility to begin with. Now, this whole situation, those comments are based on the red line being crossed, that being chemical weapons being used in Syria, even though in a clip we'll show you a little bit later on Alex Jones's breakdown of the John Kerry speech, John Kerry admits in his speech that the UN does not have any idea who actually let off the, the chemical weapons in Syria, but we still need to investigate anyway. We still need to send our troops in, get the boots on the ground anyway, even though the UN who sent people in don't know who actually let these things off. And we'll get to that a little bit later, but first let's, let's do a little bit of a, a rundown, a little bit of breakdown of the history of these type of events. We have this article, Colin Powell, No Good Samaritan. Now you can see Colin Powell right there dangling his bottle of anthrax and we'll scroll down a little bit to the part it says at the Memorial Day event Powell hailed our wounded warriors from Iraq and Afghanistan as the cameras cut to several severely damaged veterans. Now this is very similar to what happened today with the John Kerry speech because right before John Kerry I mean right before John Kerry came on they had a Medal of Honor ceremony I'm sure very much well deserved for the soldier. But they had a Medal of Honor ceremony, just like with this Colin Powell issue. They had, uh, you know, the cameras showing all the wounded warriors. You know, so before we send you over here to die in this this uh, preemptive conflict, we're just going to get you hyped up and hooped up so you can go over there and die happy and you know not make any big fuss about it. And that's the situation that's going on in here. And you'll see a whole big breakdown of this and many other things. The Alex Jones breakdown of the John Kerry speech coming up a little bit later. But let's go to this. Evident U.S. bribed Muslim Brotherhood officials, and don't take my word for it, here's Jerome Corsi. She said further that the Obama administration knows they've supported terrorism. We're going to open these files so the nations know the truth and the Obama administration is exposed and that they have collaborated with terrorists. And it's this reason that the administration fights us. So this is a clear attempt by the Egyptian government to out and embarrass the Obama administration for supporting the Egyptian Brotherhood in Egypt. You know, I'm, I'm speechless here. We have a long 18 minute segment coming up. I wanna give you the floor as best we can to lay all this, this out, but I don't just believe what they say. I've done so much research like you have. I know his cousin Odinga was the treasurer for the Brotherhood. They burned half the country down. Obama advised him in emails, as you know. I want you to give people some history. So this all fits. He and his family would become like the offshore dictators of the Middle East with the Muslim Brotherhood funneling them all the money. My gosh, now it makes sense. And also, Alex, there's a couple more things about this Malik Obama. One is he is also running money for the Sudanese terrorists. We have him attending a meeting uh, with the president of Sudan, who is wanted by the International Criminal Court for Genocide. Uh, Sudan is a terrorist nation, according to the uh, State Department, and Malik is running the money for the, this organization in Sudan. Also, Malik Obama has a foundation in the United States, wow. a 1C3, that has operated illegally for two years until Lois Lerner retroactively made it all okay at the IRS. And I definitely encourage you to go to the archives at prisonplanet.tv to see that full interview. It's very informative, and you see it's not just Obama. Well, not just the President Obama, there's many Obamas involved in this scandal. 
DOD training manual, extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's military. I don't doubt that at all. They don't want people who honor the Constitution and actually abide by their oath. Judicial Watch recently obtained a Department of Defense training manual, which lists people who embrace individual liberties and honor states' rights, among other characteristics, as potential terrorists. The manual goes on to bar military personnel from actively participating in such extremist organization activities as publicly demonstrating, rallying, fundraising, and organizing, basically denying active duty military from exercising the rights they fought so ardently to defend. So if you want to be uh, active duty military, and not just active duty military, it says here, the extremist ideologies described in the American colonists is also referenced as a potential terrorist marker. So, you know, the people who don't want to be suppressed by uh, tyranny and such, you know, people like George Washington, those are your real extremists, not, you know, the people running guns into Mexico and preemptive wars and all that. No, if you uh, abide by the Constitution and abide by your oath, then you're the real extremist. And preparing to defend, to fight these extremists, we have this Pentagon prepping for large scale economic breakdown. It's the fiscal cliff. And you can see it right there. You see the Pentagon and agencies like the Department of Defense, a lot of DOD in the news today are in full-scale emergency readiness in their own words for cataclysmic events that are believed to ultimately ignite riots in the face of chaos and economic collapse. And it's one of the reasons why we're seeing such a massive amount of spying on activists of all kinds, alternative news writers and personalities, and basically anyone preparing themselves. So the people who have the guns and the tanks and the mine-proof armored personnel carriers and the body armor and the targets of little children and pregnant women, they're saying you shouldn't get prepared, but they're prepping to the teeth. And not only that, they have storable food and water and water filters and so forth. But if you dare have, uh, you know, some storable food, you're a prepper, you get put on some crazy watch list. But they're saying they're preparing to fight the people who don't have food, because in the next paragraph, it says, you know, they're going to have large scale economic breakdowns and they're preparing for the disappearances of essential services like food. There it is right there on your screen. So they're preparing to fight the people who don't have food, but if you have food, you're a crazy prepper. And that's the world we live in today. And that's a great article from Anthony Gucciardi, and I definitely encourage everybody to go and check that out for yourself. Now we'll end the news tonight with this. Pizza delivery man shoots and kills armed robber. Pizza delivery man facing off with an armed robber, but what the suspect did not know, well, the delivery man was armed himself. Domino's driver Brian Park delivered the pizza to a room at the Days Inn on West New Haven shortly before midnight. And so far, it appears he shot in self-defense. Asked him for his money, uh, threatened to kill him. And at that point, the uh, delivery man who had a, a weapon in his vehicle pulled his firearm, uh, shooting the robber. Lo and behold, a responsibly armed citizen actually shoots somebody who is a threat to them. You know, this is something they don't want to report on the major networks, those gun grabbing networks. But yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of people out there say, you know, the guy had a knife. You should just gave him, gave him your money and it, maybe he would have stabbed you, but maybe you would have survived. How about I keep my money and my life and this guy can have a bullet? How about that? And let's end tonight with this, the quote of the day. A history of false flag attacks used to manipulate the minds of the people. In individuals, insanity is rare, but in groups, parties, nations, and epochs, it is rule. Friedrich Nietzsche. So that's it for the news portion of the InfoWars Nightly News. And we are back live on this Monday edition of InfoWars Nightly News, a day that will live in infamy, the 26th day of August 2013. The Secretary of State, John Kerry, gave an incredibly deceptive and, quite frankly, when you're informed, diabolical seven-minute speech today that we're going to play and analyze here in a few minutes. And it's designed to target mainly an American audience that is not geopolitically informed and doesn't know what's been happening for over two and a half years in Syria, where NATO and the United States, that includes France, England, you name it, have injected over 100,000 foreign fighters from Saudi Arabia, from uh, Qatar, from so many other countries that are Al-Qaeda in over 60% of the cases. That's admitted. They are engaging in incredible atrocities across the nation. And three times in the last two years, they have been caught staging chemical attacks. They've been caught. Even mainstream news 
admits in the back of the paper, okay, they staged it. It's the type they use, they did it to blame Assad and the, and the, and the Syrian military so they can take over. Now, I want to be clear from Alex Jones's perspective, and I know my crew's perspective because they're informed and I've talked to them. We don't support Assad. We don't have a dog in this fight. But as George Washington said, we shouldn't be involved in foreign entanglements. And I've interviewed Syrian nationals that are even anti-Assad, and they say the groups the West is putting in charge of the rebels and the atrocities they're doing are at least 10 times worse than anything that Assad's father even did. So this is a big issue that we're facing here. And Americans have seen the lies of WMDs in Iraq. They've seen the lies that brought us to Vietnam with the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, we've seen so many of these staged events, so many of these false flags. Now, I want to be clear as well. I believe that there was some type of chemical attack. The numbers aren't clear. The media has tried to claim already, Alex Jones says nothing happened. No, something happened in the middle of a battle zone in the capital city, uh, Damascus, of Syria. And now Assad's come out and said today, why would I attack a bunch of civilians knowing that the West has said that that's their red line a year ago to the day, that they would come and bombard us and back up the rebels? Do I want to get arrested and killed? Do I want to be thrown out of power? Do I want to see every church uh, in Syria burned to the ground because the Al-Qaeda groups Obama is supporting have said that? This is what we're talking about. And I talk to a lot of special forces people on and off air. Uh, including today, and they said, yeah, none of this makes any sense, and the West is on record funding the rebels with even heavy weapons like tanks, heat-seeking missiles, you name it. So this is really incredible. But I wanted to show you two articles first on screen. One is from the London Telegraph that came out last night, where BBC News admits they put out a fake photo from a real massacre Saddam had been involved in from 2003, but but they they lied the, the fake part and, and said these were the thousands dead from Assad when it looks like max it was 100. Okay, so this is the type of war propaganda we're seeing. Now here's Yahoo from an Infowars.com article. You can link through to the Yahoo story. Flashback, Yahoo uncovered Syrian chemical weapons false flag back in January. And what they really did was just point to mainstream news uh, that was covered in Europe where it was admitted. So the same jihadis our troops have been fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan are being funded by our government to go over here and do this, and they've been caught over and over again staging the chemical events. And Assad said over a year ago they're going to stage it and blame it on us. So Russian troops are there guarding the chemicals. So this is our in-depth special report tonight. So you can not believe us or believe Obama or believe the UN or believe Assad. So you can look at the history. We're supposed to believe rebel groups that have been caught three separate times staging smaller chemical weapons, nerve gas attacks, killing civilians. And civilians get attacked in an area they control in the capital city. This is a war crime that our government is being used for the globalists to take over this country. Just like they're back in the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda in Egypt and in Libya. It's the takeover of the Middle East by our supposed arch enemies. This is the destabilization program. Now I want to get to the real meat and potatoes before we analyze the Assad uh, slash Kerry uh, situation and go over the amazing seven minute diatribe of deception uh, that Kerry put out today. I want to go through five different clips compiled by our uh, news team uh, with Darren McBreen. First off, we're going to show you the Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter who wouldn't say who she was in the congressional committee. And it later came out, no babies were killed in incubators. This was all a lie. And then we're going to show you the media grabbing a hold of that and pushing it. And then we're going to dovetail it with Carrie Today, the Secretary of State doing the same thing, going, these are horrible images, dead children, it's terrible. Go look at them. Look at what happened. Assad did this, even though we can't prove it. This is a replay of what we've seen before. So let's go to that first clip. Our final witness is also using an assumed name. And again, we ask uh, our friends in the media to respect the need to 
for her to protect her family. And we finally call on Naira to testify. I volunteered, volunteered at the Aladan Hospital with 12 other women who wanted to help as well. I was the youngest volunteer. The other women were from 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators, and left the children to die on the cold floor. It was horrifying. I could not help but think of my nephew, who, if born premature, might have died that day as well. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new. It is not order. It is not order. No, it certainly isn't. So I understand she had only been in Kuwait when she was a baby. It all came out in newspaper articles a decade plus later. Remember, this is 20 plus years ago in 1990 that she hadn't even been there. And it turned out it was all a lie. Now let's look at what they did with that lie that ended up killing over a million three hundred thousand Iraqis in military deaths, five million total dead in the 20 plus years and the two wars later. So see, oh, babies on incubators didn't exist, but it created that emotion. And now we're dealing with millions of dead Iraqis, including at least a half million dead Iraqis that Madeleine Albright, Secretary of State, later said on TV was a good price to pay. So see, oh, 500,000 kids, they don't exist, you know, so what, they don't matter. But then, oh, the babies, the incubators, here's what they did with that information. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. I can only ask how these animals can commit such barbaric and inhuman acts and then deny that these acts ever took place. Premature infants in incubators were sentenced to die by having the incubators removed. The hardest thing was burying the babies. I myself buried 14 newborn babies that had been taken from their incubators. Now is the time to check the aggression of this ruthless dictator whose troops have bayoneted pregnant women and have ripped babies from their incubators in Kuwait. I could not help but think of my nephew, who if born premature might have died that day as well. And they had kids in incubators and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. Now again, go look this up. It's on record. If you're a new viewer, none of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. By the way, they could say that the Egyptian military had released nerve gas and start bombing them too. They could say American patriots have staged terror attacks. Oh, they did that before. Oklahoma City and blamed it on us. The Boston bombing, they say, was the work of libertarians now on MSNBC. We played that last week. These are dangerous people, folks, who can stage stuff or provocateur events or in the case of Gulf of Tonkin, just say something happened that never even happened, and absolutely attack and kill whoever they want. How did Hitler start World War II? He had his own troops attack their own military bases and blame it on Poland. That came out in the Nuremberg trials. It was called Operation Himmler. Look it up. And they hit places like Gleiwitz. But let's continue uh, here with the next clip. Here is the former military general, top general of NATO, U.S. General Wesley Clark admitting that he was in the Pentagon and they had a plan to hit eight countries. And that's since been declassified. And that's what they're doing right now. Not for American security, not for freedom, but to install radical Islam in all these countries while using the threat of radical Islam to take our rights here domestically at home. Let's go to that clip. I went through the Pentagon 10 days after 9-11, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later, I saw the same officer, I said, 
why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. And again, just a Freudian slip of accuracy. It, actually, the plan that's been declassified was eight countries. He was seeing seven, but, but to be clear, it, it is eight. Uh, so this is what's going on here. Now, let's go to uh, Colin Powell. You remember the anthrax? Turned out those, those trucks were sold by the British to pump up hot air balloons uh, for surveillance cameras on the Kurdish border, just like we have on the Texas border with Mexico. And they knew what the trucks were. They knew they were in wep weapons quarterly chains, but they lied and said, here is the anthrax they're making in the trucks. But how much longer are we willing to put up with Iraq's noncompliance before we, as a council, we as the United Nations say, enough, enough. The gravity of this moment is matched by the gravity of the threat that Iraq's weapons of mass destruction pose to the world. One of the most worrisome things that emerges from the thick intelligence file we have on Iraq's biological weapons is the existence of mobile production facilities used to make biological agents. Let me take you inside that intelligence file and share with you what we know from eyewitness accounts. We have first-hand descriptions of biological weapons factories on wheels and on rails. The trucks... And then they show the blow-ups of the uh, hot air balloon trucks, the hydrogen balloon trucks, actually. I mean, this is so frustrating to watch those gangsters like Negroponte uh, and others behind him. It's just funny to them. And they do it over and over. And Americans that are pro-war watch these countries being blown up like it's a fireworks display or something. I mean, this is the height of sickness. And believe me, folks, if we write off all these poor third world countries to be murdered and butchered and handed over to the jihadis, you think we're going to be safe here in America? By the way, those Arab countries have abortion outlawed. They don't kill their babies there. We've already had 53 million American babies killed here since Roe v. Wade. I mean, it just shows how we'll put up with anything. Let's go to this final clip before I get to the Kerry piece. This is uh, Iraq war lies, which has now been proven to be premeditated lies, about WMDs. And again, the idea is if a country has WMDs, we're going to come bomb you and invade you and kill you, even when you don't have the WMDs. But under international law, you're allowed to have weapons of mass destruction. The truth is the globalists just don't want anybody else to have them but them. Let's go to this clip. The regime is seeking a nuclear bomb. It concludes that Iraq has chemical and biological weapons. That Saddam has continued to produce them. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass death. But we now know that Saddam has resumed his efforts to acquire nuclear weapons. There are Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Saddam Hussein um, cavorts with terrorists. Saddam Hussein possesses biological and chemical weapons. CIA officials warn members of the president's staff the intelligence was not good enough to make the statement Iraq tried to buy uranium from Africa. Everybody knows that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. I have reason, every reason to believe that the intelligence that we were operating off was, uh, was correct. Why did you lie to get us into a war that was not necessary that has caused these kinds of casualties? Why? Well, first of all, I, I haven't lied. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. I said I knew where suspect sites were. And you, we said, were just you said you knew where they were near Tikrit, near Baghdad, and northeast, south, and west of there. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and well, north. Then, you, along with President Bush, top administration officials, made a total of 935 false public statements in an orchestrated attempt to take this nation to war. This study has found that you, Madam Secretary, made 56 <coughs> false statements to the American people where you repeatedly pump up the case that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Isn't it true that you had intelligence 
that cast doubt on your repeated claims that Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction? Uh, no, it's not true, Congressman. And of course, it's all now come out that it was total lies. And now the Democrats are going along with this because it's their guy. And the Republicans went along with it under Bush because it was their guy. They don't belong to you. They belong to Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and the mega banks that are taking over the few countries that aren't under the new world order right now. This is global governance by the corporatists that are anti-free market that now run the planet. And the plight that Syria is under is the plight the United States will be under down the road when the U.N. breaks this country in half, setting up Aslan and all the other ethnic balkanization plans they have to play us off against each other. I've studied their geopolitical system. This is what's happening. Now, I wanted to give you that background, and the team put that together just in the last few hours after Kerry made his speech a few hours ago. So we're only showing you a fraction of the evidence. This is just what we grabbed in a few hours before the nightly news. This is all on record. Now, we're going to go to his full seven-minute speech, and I am going to sit here breaking down what he's really done while he talks. Okay? This is teleprompter free, folks. You can check out everything I'm going to lay out here. I'm going to expose this guy. But the most chilling thing he says here is that if you question what happened with those attacks and say that it wasn't the Syrian government and the, and the Syrian opposition to the foreign rebels and the invasion, the Syrian opposition to the terrorists, that you are somehow involved in all this. Don't let us ever tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. Remember Bush said that? They do not want you questioning any of this stuff. When the same rebel group, I just showed you Yahoo and BBC got caught. It's like, well, that's what they do. They need help. They undoubtedly did it. Why would Assad do this knowing, saying they'll invade if he does? I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, how does it help him militarily to gas his own people in their capital city? Anybody that knows how propaganda works or has one brain cell knows that's pure bull. Look, in the last 10 minutes, I've broken down some of the historical background here, and I almost get to the point of being hysterical because I watch America and our treasure and our name being pulled through the mud to commit these atrocities for NATO and the globalists all over the world with the same WMD lies time after time. But in this case, the rebels that have been caught staging these events have done it again. And when we show you this speech, it is amazing how he collectively says it's our moral responsibility to do this. And how dare you question. But then he never even says they have proof. He says it doesn't matter. It's children have died. Do what we say. Let's go kill 100 times more children. And this is the heart of global governance. This is 2013. This is how it's done. This is all about the UN invading countries. Notice in this speech, in this deception he rolls out, that he says we need to move in and lock down these weapons worldwide, as if just having these weapons means you're going to be overrun and killed. It's any weapons that can be used to defend yourself against a wide-scale invasion. The UN, the globalists, don't want anybody to have weapons. Not individual Americans, nobody. They want everybody disarmed so they have the monopoly of force. Now let's go to this press conference, which clearly signals they are intending to start using cruise missile attacks, ground troops, you name it, very, very soon. They are intending right now to go ahead with this yet again. And then it'll be Egypt next. Oh, they've got WMDs. We've got to invade them. They won't let the Muslim Brotherhood burn down all the churches. It's just watching our government aid Al-Qaeda and radical Islam to commit atrocities and overthrow governments and clearly stage chemical attacks to be blamed on the opposition. It just shocks me how evil they are and that knowing how the government works, these Al-Qaeda forces run by the State Department, that's who runs these operations, just like Benghazi, Undoubtedly, if this was a false flag and all evidence indicates that, it's probably somebody like John Kerry that gave the order. Now, we're going to go to this in a moment, but what I'm trying to say here is that I got really freaked out today watching the press conference live because I've studied geopolitical systems and how 
the command structure works and who's managing this covert war, it's the State Department. When I'm watching this, the reason I get so upset and the reason I'm in a controlled rage right now is that I realize John Kerry's the prime suspect for probably orchestrating this fake chemical attack that killed all these people, this false flag. He's the prime suspect. And that's what's so sick is that these guys love to get up there and blame something like this on a government they want to overthrow so they can carry out mass slaughter and, 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 and deindustrialization of a country, part of their Agenda 21, and he's the prime suspect in actually planning the operation. Out of everybody, he's the type of guy in the command structure that would actually default do this. So we're probably hearing the mastermind of the chemical attack that's been blamed on Syria up there saying, look at these children. As a father, it's so hard. Go watch that video again. It is so sick. I, I almost puke. I almost turned this table over. Knowing that these are such known liars makes me so angry. We've got to stand against this. We've got to speak out against this. We've got to get congressional investigations. We've got to come together for justice and realize these false flags are being used to take over the world. Let's go to his speech. It's unbelievable. As President Obama and his entire national security team have been reviewing the situation in Syria. And today I want to provide an update on our efforts as we consider our response uh, to the use of chemical weapons. What we saw in Syria These last These psychopaths week use our humanity world. to it shock us in our emotions so these psychopaths can get us to the go along with what they do. The killing of women and children and innocent bystanders No proof Syria did chemical it. Chemical weapons is a moral obscenity. You're a moral obscenity. By any standard. You're a known liar. inexcusable and despite the excuses and equivocations that some have manufactured. Excuses, equivocations? It is undeniable. It's been confirmed the you guys have lied. This attack goes beyond the conflict in Syria itself. It's about global government. That conflict has already brought so much. It's about disarming suffering. everybody that could ever oppose you. This is about the large scale, indiscriminate use it's about of Goldman weapons Sachs and world civilized government. world long ago decided must never be used at all. The civilized world, that's the super technocracy. Shared, even by countries that agree on little else. There is a clear reason that the world has banned entirely the use of chemical weapons. Like Agent Orange dioxin. There is a reason the international community has set a There's clear There's a reason standard. you put fluoride in the water and no chemical weapons. Many countries have taken major steps Harvard studies to, to brain eradicate damages. these weapons. There is a reason why President Obama There's has a reason made the White House science are wrote a book about brain damaging us with the it. the proliferation of these weapons. Because you're a bunch of murderous, down, psychopathic bastards. And there I'm so sick of watching you commit crime after crime and running Al-Qaeda. That this John international Kerry, norm cannot be liar, violated without liar, consequences. Liar, liar, liar. And there is a reason why no matter what you believe about Syria, no matter what you believe, all peoples and all, all nations people who believe in the cause of our common humanity, our humanity stand should support them injecting Al-Qaeda rebels to try to overthrow the government and so kill all the Christians. Happens again. Why do they love killing Christians Last so much? Last night, after speaking with foreign ministers from around the world about the gravity of this Foreign gang leaders. I went back and I watched the videos. Here he goes. The videos that anybody can watch. You're the prime the suspect. And I watched them You're running the covert operation. Time. You covered up in it's Gaza. It's really hard to express in words. The human suffering it that is. they lay out before us. It's hard to describe father, what you've done. I can't get the image out of my head. I can't either, you of a man bastard. who held up his dead child, wailing while chaos. That you throw in our face, him. but you love aborting the American of babies. Entire families dead in their beds mm -hmm. without a drop of blood or even a visible wound. Bodies contorting in spasms. Human suffering that we can never ignore or forget. God, these people. Anyone who could claim that an attack of this staggering They're going to stage terror attacks in America and blame libertarians. Needs to check their Just like MSNBC did last week to us. Compass. This is how they what take over. They stage crap and blame it on their enemy. Real. It's elementary. And it is compelling. So I also want to underscore that while investigators are gathering additional evidence on the ground, our understanding investigators, of what has happened in Syria CIA run doctors without borders and the Al Qaeda resistance by conscience 
and guided by common sense. Oh, the conscience. The reported oh, number the of goodness. Victims, the reported symptoms of those who were killed or injured. The first-hand accounts from humanitarian organizations on the ground. Just like the babies like in the incubators. Borders, all the Tonkin. Syria, Human Rights Commission. WMDs in Iraq. These all strongly indicate that everything these images are already screaming at us is real. Screaming at us? What, your Al-Qaeda people got the green light? Moreover, Obama said a year ago, if Assad uses chemical weapons, Syrian we'll attack him, and then magically it happens in rebel-held areas? Weapons. We know that the Syrian regime has the capacity to do this with rockets. Yeah, they have legal we know and lawful that the chemical weapons. Has been determined to clear the opposition from those very places where the attacks took place. And with our own eyes, we have all of us become witnesses. We have additional information about this attack. Oh. And that information is being compiled and reviewed together Just with like our the partners. Just like the fake dossiers on Iraq. And we will provide that information in the days Take some ahead. more Botox, you ugly punk. Our sense of basic humanity is offended. You don't have basic humanity, you crime, known psychopath. But You're also the coward. By the cynical attempt to cover You're it up. cynical. You're a piece of At trash. Every turn, We're sick of slick psychos like you. Cooperate with the UN investigation. We see through you. Using we see who you are. To stymie the important You're the prime to bring suspect. To light you. What happened in Damascus? And the, the world knows. And as Ban Ki-moon said last week, head of the UN, the UN investigation will not determine who used these chemical weapons. Oh, see, doesn't matter. Only whether such weapons were see, used. See, either way, we got to invade, see? That is already clear to the world. Because the last three times they I got spoke caught on doing Thursday it. with Syrian Foreign Minister Mualem. Now it doesn't even and matter if they staged it. I to him that if the regime, as he argued, had nothing to hide, then their response should be immediate. Immediate transparency. It was. Immediate access. And that wasn't good enough. Not shelling. So they claim, oh. Their response needed to be unrestricted and immediate access. Failure to permit that, I told him, would tell its own story. They're so mad their Al-Qaeda is getting beaten. Instead, for five days, the Syrian so regime refused to allow the UN investigators access to the site of the attack. Five days. It hadn't been five days. Exonerate them. And now there's evidence it's Instead, the rebels it that shot it. the area further. No, no. It. It's the rebels that have been kidnapping you in on record. That is not the behavior Show the, of a It's on InfoWars, the article. That has nothing to hide. Unbelievable. That is not the action of a regime eager to prove to the world that it had not used chemical weapons. In fact, the regime's belated decision to allow access... When's the last time late. chemical weapons were officially it is too used? Late to be credible. 1980s, Today's reports of Saddam an attack on the UN under CIA advisement against the Iran. Continued shelling of these very neighborhoods. The last time Only chemical weapons were officially used the credibility. was with the U.S. government with At Saddam in the Iran-Iraq war. I've spent many hours... Over these the guys, right here. On the phone They're the, the last ones on record to do leaders. it. Right there. The administration is actively consulting with members of Congress. Oh, yeah. And we will continue to have these conversations in the days ahead. President Obama has also been in close touch with leaders of our key allies. And the president will be making an informed decision about how to respond to this indiscriminate use of chemical weapons. But make no mistake. President Obama believes there must be accountability for those who would use the world's most heinous weapons. Like you, the prime suspect? Against the world's most vulnerable people. Nothing today is more serious, and nothing is receiving more serious scrutiny. Thank you. And then they'll let the public beg and beg and beg. Oh, we've got to invade. Why won't they do anything for the children? Remember back when they attacked Serbia? Uh, British news, in fact, we can pull this up, just type in British uh, fake concentration camp on Serbs or British war propaganda Serbia. And they had a UN facility with all the food in it that they wouldn't share. And they showed a guy with tuberculosis and cancer on the fence. There were fat guys next to him wanting in. And they said, here are the victims inside a Serb camp. It's like... Uh, the famous uh, yellow journalist Ted William Randolph Hearst with his newspaper chain told uh, Remington, the famous painter, I don't care if you go to Cuba. Just paint me pictures of atrocities. You manufacture the, the, the paintings. I'll manufacture the war. And it's the same thing over and over and over and over 
and over and over again, just like the sinking of the Lusitania to get us into World War I. The Germans put ads, full-page ads, saying this is an auxiliary ship of the Navy. It's bringing weapons in from the U.S. We're going to torpedo it. And when they wouldn't torpedo it, they had the Lusitania drive back and forth in front of the U-boats. Back and running military flags, by the way, to let everybody know it was legal to shoot them, to torpedo them. This is the type of stuff they do. And, and look, I get angry about this because John Kerry really is the prime suspect. Our government, hijacked by these criminals, undoubtedly is behind this. There's no reason Assad would use those weapons and target civilians with them. And, and the rebels have been caught, but I've already said all that. You know, the reason I say so much is because it's painful to know that they're probably going to bomb the whole country again. And then the Al-Qaeda will go in and, and massacre every minority group that's there, just like they always do. If you're black in the country, you're just dead out of hand. If you're a woman going to college, you're going to be probably stoned to death. Uh, if you're not sexually mutilated, they're going to do it. Uh, if you're an Alawite minority Muslim, you're dead. If you're Christian, you're dead. If you're Jewish, you're dead. That was a truly ancient, multicultural, 3,000-year-old system. And the globalists are, are just doing everything they can to destroy every sovereign country that they don't control. And it is a giant war crime, and it's being done in our name, ladies and gentlemen. And so that's it for this extended breakdown. Great job of the crew getting all this together. Uh, for the expanded nightly news tonight. Great job, Jakari Jackson. With the news, uh, we are now going to end this transmission, but I'll be back on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, breaking all this down. If you have seen this evidence, if, if, if you're concerned about this like I am, please get this video when it's later posted to the archives of PrisonPlanet.tv and on YouTube, and please get it out to everyone you know. Because if we don't stand up for basic justice and, and basic reality, we're all doomed. I'm Alex Jones signing off for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Please, even if you don't believe in God, meditate. Think about ideas of how to get justice. Pray to God to protect the little children, no matter whether they are Wahhabist or Shiite or Alawite or Christian or Jewish. And, 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 and all the minority groups that are in that country because they're all going to be killed. The videos are all online of them chopping off the heads, blowing up the churches. They killed 40,000 plus Africans, it's estimated, in Libya, black Africans. The jihadis did. I mean, this, 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 and our media won't even cover it. They are going to kill people from end to end of that country. They're already doing it. And I just, it's another giant lie that's going to happen, another huge fraud with them showing dead kids on TV to push the agenda. And I think prayer is, 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 is something that will really help here, but also calling talk radio, writing your own articles about it, spreading this video, calling Congress. And here's my final point. Everybody I talk to, whether they're left, right, libertarian, black, white, doesn't matter. Everybody I talk to sees through this. All the military personnel I talk to, whether they be officer, enlisted, or non-commissioned, they see through it. And so it's almost like even if we don't buy into it, this whole event is to make it look like, well, they put out more BS and somebody bought into it. The truth is they're doing whatever they want regardless of what common law, common sense, the Bill of Rights, international law says. So it's almost like this whole massacre is a diversion from the fact they're already invading with heavy weapons with the rebels. It's just like a excuse so they can debate us and say, oh, you're for nerve gassing the children? It just gives some fake moral authority to these cold-blooded psychopaths. I'm tired of the reign of the psychopath. I'm tired of them getting away with anything and everything. It's time for good men to stand up. It's time for good people of conscience to take action. Because as Thomas Jefferson said, all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men do nothing. And this evil has taken place because too many good men that know the truth have decided to sit on their butts and have decided they're powerless. Well, not me and not my crew and not our viewers. We're taking action with 1776 worldwide with revolution against the new world order and its beast system. We will restore with God's help the republic. And even if we fail, we'll be an example to generations to come that some stood against evil. That's it for InfoWars Nightly News.
Well, as a prelude to the mortgage meltdown that we've seen affect the entire country, the banks set up a shadow system of record keeping that essentially bypassed the age-old system of legal recording of documents. That system, MERS, is at the heart of what happened in America with homes and people losing their homes through foreclosure. And we have someone here who is exposing that. It's now coming to light. He talks about it at great length in his book, Clouded Title. That's available at InfoWarsStore.com. It's Dave Krieger, and he's our guest here today. And he has some important breaking news about some additional investigation that he's done right here in Texas. Well, Dave, thanks for joining us. Hey, we've got huge breaking news. It's exclusive to InfoWars. You came to us first. What? But before we get into that, I just talked about how this is a fraudulent transfer. What's at the heart of the fraud? Tell us about MERS. MERS started out, uh, MERS, first off, is an acronym, David, for Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems, Inc. MERS is nothing, as we're finding out now, uh, thanks to some new research by Robert M. Jaynes, who's an attorney out of New Mexico. Uh, what he did, he drilled down into the 2009 MERS Corp rules. MERS is basically a shell. It's a storefront for mm -hmm. all intents and purposes. It, it claims to be a system, a system that was created by the banks, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and you know the American Land Title Association even got into the picture as well. Mm. MERS Corp, Inc., as it was known back then, in 1999, it started up January 1st, and what this entity basically did was control the entire business model known as MERS. MERS basically is an electronic database that is owned by MERS Corp, now MERS Corp Holdings, Inc., as of February of 2012. They changed their name again. What a great way to obfuscate the situation. When, when a borrower tries to go to the closing table, what they don't realize with the way this program was designed is that the 18-digit MIN number that's underneath the document titled Mortgage or Deed of Trust, that number was on there when you went to closing. When you went to closing and you signed the documents, it is highly likely that your loan has been sold over and over and over again before you even put your signature on the mortgage paperwork at closing. And that's key to what happened with TARP and everything because what they, it was about the time that they repealed Glass-Steagall, right? That's that exactly it. It's so coincidental yeah. that, you know, Glass-Steagall, here it is, a post-depression era piece of legislation that was put there with good intention to stop the banks from causing what they caused during the Depression. And that was jumping into the derivatives market and playing in derivatives to the point where, you know, they were literally, uh, in, in, you know, to the degree that it's happening now, oh, yeah. we, we now know that they were making side bets, hoping uh, and structuring the loans so the loans would fail. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what they were doing in 1994 during the Clinton area, era, they were, they were dangling the carrot out to all these poor people and homeowners and people who could not afford a loan in the first place. They shouldn't have been given a loan. There are renters and there are owners. Mm -hmm. They were led to believe by the administrations of the past, Clinton forward especially, that it was Americans' every right to own a home. Well, it mm -hmm. isn't. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to get a mortgage loan based on your credit repayment history, which in this case, when Glass-Steagall was repealed, they pulled out all the stops and literally countrywide executives were quoted as saying, if you can fog up a mirror, we can give you a loan. Yeah. And so they, it's where we got ninja loans and liar loans, stated income loans, and people who had no business getting loans got loans. And as I was explaining before we went on, David, you know, you, you're at a certain point here where a person has a breaking point. They're employed, they've got an income, and the promise is made, well, it looks like you can afford to make the payments on this house. Whether they could or not, they were told this, and look, well, you can afford a $200,000 house instead of a $100,000 house. Well, the entire time, they knew that when this adjustable rate predatory mortgage that they took on reset itself two or three years down the road, they'd fall off the wagon. Right, or, it's a pump let, and dump. Exactly. And, and, and what they did, they didn't only uh, manipulate the interest rates, they also manipulated the actual price of the houses, you know, the, the appraisal values. I mean, we saw in 2007, it made absolutely no sense to me. But in our personal experience, we had a neighbor who came to us and said, hey, I just had an appraisal on my house and it, it went up 30% over where it was a few years ago. And it's like, really? Yeah, the interest rates are lower. I can get money out of it and everything. So we looked at it. They came back within one month our house had appraised 30% lower. 
that it had over a longer period of time. And so we, we couldn't believe that. So we went to another appraiser and that appraiser came, a uh, second appraiser came up 30% lower. And he said, yeah, the banks will no longer approve these. They basically had given them a ceiling and had told them to drop it 30%. So combined with the interest rate increase, combine that with the drop in the appraised values of the houses, you've got pe people under, underwater. And then the securitization thing, the, the fact that they repeal Glass-Steagall so that the banks could then go in and offer these things as securities, and like I say, put them in a blender, essentially, and then sell these things off at speculative uh, prices to people. That was the prescription that put this all in. But then they portrayed it to us as, who knew? You know, who would know that well, this, this just happened, right? <laughs> it just happened. No, it's just it all didn't, coincidence it, that all that It didn't happened, just right? happen. We know it didn't just that's happen. Right. I mean, <laughs> anybody out there that's facing foreclosure right now understands that these Wall Street trusts that were created right now, and there's a, a brand new case on the market that I've been pushing in my book, Clouded Titles, and this case is called Glasky versus Bank of America. It's a case out of the fifth appellate district of California. And in essence, what this case says that goes to the core of my argument is, is that the pooling and servicing agreement, the PSA, which is the governing documents for the trust vehicle that claims to own your loan when they come at you in foreclosure. Usually it's this sentence long lender who you've never heard of before. You, you took your loan out with America's wholesale lender or you know American broker's conduit or some other what we call a table funded lender. And then when it, it's all said and done and the securitization markets get a hold of it, your loan is probably sold nine, 10, 20 times. Mm -hmm. We have no idea how many times it was sold because with the MERS system, alluding back to your comment on MERS, the circumstances are such that when the original note and mortgage is recorded by the original table funded lender, the note goes into the MERS system and is systematically transferred electronically without any of those interests recorded in the land records. And that gets to your breaking story. That because gets to breaking the breaking story. What that does is that basically gores the ox of the local counties who are, especially here in Texas, they're making most of their money off of real estate taxes, yes. real estate transfer fees. They, they went around that whole system, so they now sure your did. allies and going after this fraud are actually clerks of the court. Correct. Well, clerks of the county, of the county, of the the county, county right. clerk. Yeah, county. Uh, what's, what's an, and this happened, this started last October. I was commissioned, my, my firm was commissioned to go in and audit land records in Williamson County, Texas. And this is, uh, you know, in Georgetown, for those of you, it's just north of Austin. It's a Penturbia County of, of Austin and uh, bedroom community, a lot of wealthy people live there. And one of the things that kind of bothered the clerk and her staff was the fact that they thought that this audit would fall on deaf ears. And I said, well, I have a proposal for you. Why don't we audit all the judges? Why don't we audit all the elected officials, anybody that's got MERS on their mortgage, that's got any kind of power to decide the laws or make the laws in this county, and we'll present that as part of the audit. This audit was 179 pages long, and what we did was basically a miniature chain of title assessment for each judge and elected official in Williamson County. Well, it didn't fall on deaf ears then because they yeah. were all scrambling to read the audit to find out where their situation was. Exactly. And where they it's were. It's not an abstract thing. About no, it, it wasn't abstract at all. them, right? And, and the bigger yeah. problem is, though, David, is that you know, they already had looked at this situation and they didn't like what they were seeing. Nancy Reister, the county clerk, is a heroine in my book. Uh, like, you know, we have 3,033 counties in America and only four have elected to actually conduct a chain of title assessment or a comprehensive audit of, of any kind wow. in America. And I encourage anybody watching this broadcast to get on the phone, call your recorder, your clerk, your register of deeds, your auditor, whatever state you happen to be in, and tell them they need to seriously consider, uh, and I'm not just trying to stump for business here, this is a national systemic problem. The bigger problem we have here now is because of MERS and all the intervening assignees that never recorded their interest in these transfers of these loans on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. When you go to sell your house to someone at the closing table, here's the education, you're signing a warranty deed wherein you are telling the buyer of your property that you warrant clear title. What happens with MERS involved and these intervening assignees left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing because we're seeing a lot of that in foreclosure instances these days where banks are foreclosing on homes where the note was either paid or foreclosing on the wrong home. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and they're, you know, changing the padlocks on homes of people uh, who didn't deserve to have their locks changed. Right. So the, the bigger problem is when you sell that piece of property to a buyer, you are potentially subjecting that buyer to double liability because you, he may have paid off or is paying on one and you may have paid off one. As far as your loan goes, you may have paid off your loan with his proceeds because he's buying his interest in your property and you're conveying the deed to him. Mm -hmm. The deed is your proof of ownership in the property. And if you don't know this, you know, you need to do some homework. You, you really seriously, there's deeds come in all shapes and sizes, but the bank doesn't get the deed. The bank only gets a deed when you, uh, when you don't pay your mortgage and they foreclose. And so when, you know, what they're doing is they're foreclosing on the note, not the deed of trust. Well, MERS place itself into the land records by permission. And if you want to stop this and, and stop the bleeding and turn off the tap, the counties are going to have to get involved. Here's the big news. Williamson County today sent me a packet of information, including signed contracts from the same law firm representing the Dallas County versus MERS Corp case. And Williamson County is going to be joining Nueces County in the current lawsuit ongoing where the federal judge in Corpus Christi has held MERS Corp Holdings Inc. and Bank of America, among others, into the uh, the process. They are not dismissed from this case. The case is moving forward. Williamson County is now another county that is going to join in the fray to try to recover what it feels uh, it was ripped off from, which is all these recordings. Mm -hmm. Well, this has huge implications, just like the, the title of your book, Clouded Title. Even if you're not involved in a foreclosure, it creates all kinds of title issues so that you can't really have clear transference of title because in the past it was a very clear process. Everything was recorded at the county office. Now that they've securitized this, split it up, fractionalized it, done all this speculative t stuff to it, and they're not recording the title each time. So that creates a cloud and uncertainty on the title. It creates all kinds of legal jeopardy as well as situations where people get their house foreclosed on when they don't even owe a, a mortgage because there's so much confusion and because they have short circuited this time honored paperwork trail that, that really served us well, they don't pay attention to that anymore. So all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. Right? You know, David, I should have you come and lecture at my seminars and have you stump for <laughs> me because you seem to have a pretty good handle on this situation. I've read some of your books. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> very much. I've read all of it, but I've read a good deal. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have a, a seminar. As a matter of fact, I, I'm not planning on doing any more seminars this year. Uh, these take their toll on me as well as my family, and, and uh, the, the circumstances are such that we need help. There are over 70 million titles to property in America right now that are affected by this mess. And since MERS is claiming 60% of all the titles to property in America are affected, that they hold those. Wow. And, and so when you look at the fact or the point that you might not be able to sell your house because you can't convey clear title. And if you do sell your house and the title company whitewashes it, and the, the term I use is whitewash because of the fact that if they were to say, well, we're going to, if you look at Schedule B in your title policy, if you were to say, well, I'm gonna buy an owner's policy, you're paying the title company roughly $700 or better for what we call an owner's indemnity policy. And there's more than one kind. At closing, you're actually paying for the lender's title policy and not your own. Mm -hmm. Unless you ask for one, you won't get it. And inside there in Schedule B. So you're making B, sure they're being protected. Exactly. You have no protection. Exactly. So you have to actually buy one yourself. Once you do this and you, you get it, you look at the policy and under exceptions or exclusions, it says under Schedule B, which is required on every policy, if it's not in the land records, we don't insure it. Uh, well, with MERS, what do you think that does? Nothing's in the land records. Nothing's in the land records because it jumps from the original mortgage forward. And so when you sell your property, the title company is going to insure everything that is recorded backwards. Title policies only cover what's currently on the record in reverse through time immemorial from when the first land patent was granted on that tract of land forward to its current subdivided state. Title policies, this is something that most of your viewers probably don't understand, David. Title policies only insure in reverse. They don't insure forward. So that means during your tenure of ownership in your property, if you've got MERS in your mortgage, there is a very good chance, and they're going to make very they're going to make light of this. The banks in MERS will make light of this and say, oh no, 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 there's nothing. Not there's, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong here. Uh, but what happens when you sell that property down the road? You've got this history with MERS in your chain of title and all these unrecorded interests there that could come back and foreclose on the new buyer 
And because your policy says we don't insure anything that's not recorded in the land records, guess who has to pay the legal fees out of pocket? We do. Wow. Wow. That's the danger here. So how do you how do we unwind this? And, well, and, how do, and, yeah. and, and what kind of well to start with? Let, let's talk about uh, what what homeowners can do that are facing foreclosure because we've seen a lot of fraudulent stuff done by yes, Bank of have. America that's come out. We've got whistleblowers talking about how they were incentivized that's to right. uh, get people in trouble, and they hold this carrot out there of the HAMP program from the federal government. Correct. Hold that out there and use that as a as a way to get people behind in their mortgages. They they will literally tell you. You can't be a part of this program unless you, and we can't refinance you even though you're underwater. We can't refinance all that unless you get behind in your mortgage. Exactly. Once you get behind in your mortgage, you're done. And, you know, it would seem like a lender liability issue to me for the lender to encourage the borrower to go into default. Mm -hmm. But when you realize that the, they tell the borrower to be in default for 90 days, well, if at, on day 91, what's to stop the lender if there's a default insurance policy out there from going to the default insurer and say, hey, these people are past 90 days due, pay up. That's now right. the lender's been made whole and they're still stealing the property. I mean, mm -hmm. taking the property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's all sorts of problems. Then you're talking about your derivatives market. Yes. These people between 2003 and 2008 made nearly $53 trillion. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they've enriched themselves betting against their very own. I mean, literally they were selling it to our own 401ks and our own, uh, you know, retirement programs and saying, this is great. And they knew that the loans were, you know, not fit to make. They made them to people that shouldn't have had them. Everybody got out of the way, no regulatory oversight, and the lenders just had free reign on all these poor people and ended up you know, in what it looks like is the biggest la massive land grab in America. Oh yeah, they go to the Congress and say, uh, we've got to get you to bail out the mortgages right away or there's going to be riots in the street, and yet they didn't bail out a single person, not a single homeowner. They got enough money from the Congress that they could have paid off 70% of the mortgages in the United States, but they kept all of that money and are still going after foreclosing the, the houses and playing these games with, uh, like you said, with the MERS record. I know, and, 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 many of the, yeah, and many of the AGs, David, who mm -hmm. accepted this money in, in these settlement agreements ended up contributing this money to the general fund for, for general uses in the state and not for the purposes of helping homeowners. This is why this gets to the point it should affect everybody. Everybody should be concerned about this because we said at the beginning, it's the most massive transfer of wealth we have ever seen. And it is going from the mass of the middle class who have most of their money invested in their, their major asset was their home. That's right. Even though they had essentially been uh, debt slaves to the banks, they still had some equity in the homes. We've seen that wiped out with the manipulation of the interest rates, manipulation of appraised values, and the securitization uh, fraud that's going on. And so we're seeing this, you were talking about Wisconsin. Mitchell, Wisconsin. Oh, that, that's, so, that's so sad because uh, I, I talked to a woman and she called and she said, we just found out in 2009 that our, uh, we had an interest only mortgage. <laughs> we had no idea we were paying an interest only mortgage. All these years in 05, we got this mortgage and we're just making payments. And I said, interest only mortgage, this is like uh, a rent with a deficiency on the back end because Wisconsin is a deficiency state, which means that if you go into default and they foreclose on your property and they sell it and your property is worth 200,000 and they only get 100,000 for it on the auction block because values are upside down, the lender is going to come after you for the deficiency of $100,000. They're going to dog you till you die, till it gets paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we're seeing all over the place. And it, it's a sad state of affairs because a lot of these people are losing jobs yes. and they're unemployed and they're only, they're making a minimum amount of unemployment, which is about to run out and they have to move out of the property. Uh, and you know, where do they go? And they, you know, literally taken all their 401ks to try to pay up on their mortgage, which is the worst thing that you can do if you're in trouble. Yes. You, you deplete the 401k. Because and, they can't come after your 401k no. in a bankruptcy proceeding. No. Nope. Right? So, and, and that's so a problem. If you, but if you voluntarily take that out and pour that in trying to chase this bad loan that you're not going to be paid off, now you're sunk. Exactly. And see, left. many many people just, you know, they don't contact attorneys. They don't do the research, which is why I wrote this book, Clouded Titles, because section three of the book, Strategic Default, which is what a lot of people are doing. They're just walking away from their mortgages. Uh, this basically is done just because uh, we need to let people know what their options are. That's the education they didn't get in high school. Mm -hmm. We didn't have mortgage 101 in high school. So what are some of their options? What what's somebody do that's now behind and they've got the bank is foreclosing on them and they've got a MERS mortgage? What, what is the best way they can proceed at this point? Well, first off, you have to evaluate your game plan. 
I mean, this is not legal advice. This is what I would do. If it was me that was affected, I would literally sit down and say, look, we need to have that come to Jesus meeting. We need to sit down with the family and say, look, do we really need to live here? We've, we've obviously bit off more than we can chew. We've lost our job. We don't know, you know, one, one parent's only working now instead of two because, you know, the way things have been since the 80s and 90s, we've had, you know, two family income earners, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a situation where you literally have to come up and formulate a game plan to survive. And most people, when they bought a house, didn't plan to have to have 5000 or $10,000 in a legal fund to have to defend themselves in these situations. And you future buyers out there, every time I see on my Google alert, I see mortgage electronic registration systems pop up, and it's a notice that's been recorded in the paper about another homeowner who went out and got a MERS mortgage. And I just shake my head and I go, wow. Mm -hmm. Here's another piece of property right now that's fallen victim to the system. So the first thing you do is if you're going to buy a home, you make sure that it's not a MERS mortgage. Exactly. Emerged. We have a lot of investors, as a matter of fact, come to these seminars, which, by the way, the next one is September 27th through the 29th in Chicago. And I will not be, as I know of right now, there are no plans to do another one. So if you're going to come, we have limited seating and we're filling up. So I would really go to cloudedtitles.com, sign up and register and be in Chicago in September. You need to be there if you want the facts. We have investors coming. We have disgruntled homeowners that are looking for answers. I actually had one, I was on another talk show one night and one of the people in the Chicago seminar from last year called up and he said, my attorney was totally clueless. I told him, look, we have a hearing the next day. I just came from Dave Krieger's seminar and learned so much stuff. I went into the court myself because the attorney wasn't ready to present his case. Mm -hmm. Well, the hearing was the next day, so the, the homeowner went into court pro and, se, yeah. pro se, and explained a lot of this stuff to the judge who said fine and put the brakes on the entire proceeding. He actually bought himself another year in the house. Now, mm -hmm. you know, this does not mean you get a free and clear house and don't ever say I said it because I'll deny it. The bigger picture is here, if you have an extra year, make plans. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to fight in the, in, in the court system, you have to plan and prepare for appeal because most of these district court judges, their 401ks are rooted in these same derivatives mm -hmm. that we're sitting here talking about right now that, that the banks, you know, made off like bandits on. Mm -hmm. And their retirement plans are based on this. And so you can see they're just a little bit biased. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a problem when you face them because the district court judges... It's a 50-50 shot. In fact, if you know for, for a fact that they have any interest in banking whatsoever, the chances you know, diminish for the homeowner to be successful in a hearing like that, which means it would have to go to appeal. Mm -hmm. And you have to know whether you've got a good case, and that's why we need to educate more attorneys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if somebody is currently behind, your advice to them would be to... Sit down and start making a game plan. You okay. have to have an end game. Even when you go see an attorney, David, attorneys want to know what's your end game. Right. Do you want to live in the house? Do you want to fight for the house? Here's how much money you're going to have to have to do it. Right. Then you sit down and you decide, okay, here's what we can afford. We're going to have to have a big garage sale. You know, we're literally going to have to put as much money together as we can. You're going to have to, you know, sell all your stuff on eBay or whatever other, you know, mm -hmm. websites, Craigslist, whatever you can. I mean, this is what people do. They lighten the load. They get right. light because, you know, if, if you don't do anything, the sheriff's going to come to your house, put all your stuff and you out on the curb. And we've seen in many instances where they come to the house and, and put them out at gunpoint. Yeah. And yeah. so we, we don't want that. We know that Americans are honest and they're hardworking, but you know, let's face it, with MERS and these banks and the system, the way it's set up, you've all been fooled, you've all been conned, and now you have to react. And we don't want you to make stupid mistakes. And above all, and I'm seeing more and more of this, people are going to jail for filing documents in the land records attempting to cloud their own title hmm. because they think that they can get away with not, uh, you know, they won't kick us out if we can cloud our title. You don't want to do that because the AGs are now prosecuting homeowners who have done this. A woman in Stanislaus, California, went to jail for two consecutive one-year terms for filing two documents in the land records trying to stop her parents' foreclosure hmm. and, and ended up getting prosecuted. We have other people that wow. you know, may have gone back in and changed the locks on their own house, moved back in, and you know, somebody else might have been living there. And now they're up for burgl they're on burglary charges. I mean, literally, it's it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Homeowners, you have to fight. Two wrongs don't make a right. You have to fight the good fight the right way. 
And so an education is the first thing you need to do. You need to make the decision and come up with an end game and educate yourself as to what's going on and how this happened. Then you can better deal with, okay, we really know we cannot, we don't have the money for a legal fight. So we're gonna have to either look to rent or find an owner finance. I mean, there's a lot of different things that I would do mm -hmm. if, if the scenario was laid before me. But I certainly, if I knew I had an interest only mortgage, I would not be paying on that interest only mortgage if it was me. I'd be looking at a situation where you know, I, I made a stupid mistake. Absolutely. And, and I, there's no way I'm going to get out of it. Well, as you just said, it really comes down to education, to understand what is what you can legally do and what you should not do. That's a very important thing. And your book is a wealth of information. Clouded Title by Dave Krieger. We've got it available at InfoWarsStore.com. And you've got some seminars that are coming up. Give us that date one more time in right. Chicago. In, in Chicago, it's at the Holiday Inn in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. And it is uh, September 27th, 28th, and 29th. It's a three-day seminar. You can go on Clouded Titles and sign up and register, download the registration forms, and fax them in. Uh, you know, you can make your payment to attend. Uh, I, I have attorneys that attend these seminars. And literally, you know what the comment is? They don't teach us this stuff in law school. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. We have a lot of attorneys attending well, our seminars. A lot of this stuff has just been invented, right? <laughs> a lot of this stuff was just fraudulently put in the last We're, we're of on the decades. cutting edge of a big so. business, but we're actually teaching people, David, how to make money, helping us assess chains of title, because more and more homeowners, as they come to realize what's going on, they're going to seek out people who have taken these classes that understand how to do chain of title assessments or CODAs. They, they're going to hire them and pay them money, and people can literally sit at their desks at home part-time and make a good living doing chain of title assessments for homeowners and their attorneys who are affected by this mess. There you go. One way for people to, it's a win-win situation, isn't it? Yes, Would it is. If it did that. Well, thank you very much, Dave Krieger. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's Great my point. pleasure, and thank you for having me. Thank you. And again, that book is Clouded Title. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. A wealth of information about what you legally can do and should not do to protect your legal interests, as well as for people who have any, aren't even in a foreclosure situation. It will give you important information to help you avoid getting into a situation where you buy property that already has a clouded title. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.